All right, we yeah. are live. We're Hello, good. welcome back. I have just revealed that I'm, you know, in my in my benevolent DMness, I have drawn the tapestry which was acquired by the players, and you can see it now. It's a very good drawing, I might add. Thank I like you. It. I did it on my iPad. Very nice. With uh, my note taking out. It took me maybe like 20 or 30 minutes. But it was worth <laughs> it. <laughs> well, the detail is pretty. What's the, the left thing that's like the sun? This, the yellow? The yellow is the, the talisman. Ah. What I mentioned. Sword, shield, and. What's that last one? It's like a. Some sort of an artifact. It's it looks like um, two faces. I'm not. Yeah, it's like two faces. Thank you for at least remembering that enough to tell what my drawing is. Oh, Does that the look right what side it looks is like. a skull, and the left side is a face. Is that like similar to that artifact that I saw in my brain? Like, is that is that shape? Because it was like an when I got the oh what was it the the fungus spores. Yep. That's the vision that we got from the fungus spores. There it... was an artifact that was sort of egg shaped. Yeah. Ding 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 ding. Okay. Yes. That is you as you see it, as you look at the tapestry, you're inspecting it and you you see it and it's it is like you have a friggin' epiphany. Your mind is like, holy shit, that's the thing for my dream. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's that's so all we know. That, <laughs> that's what it is. And I can if have I shown I don't think I've shown you guys a picture of it yet. I do have a picture of it. No, I, no, I don't I don't think you have yet. Okay, well since I so I, what I will do is I'll send a link to Thrust and Thrust will know about what it is. Okay. Uh Lyra sword as well. Yeah, I think Lyra Oh and, right, okay. Uh, so I'll send it to the two yeah. of you. Give me one Le second. Lyra and Thrust were the only ones who saw it. Excellent. I think the rest of us either rolled really good or were immune to the poison. Yeah. We should definitely talk to someone about this in town, maybe. You can try. Yeah. I don't I'd... know but how many people would know all... about a weird artifact. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't show it to that Aldo guy. He's just mean. Yeah, she is. But maybe we could fuck with him a little. He's not my type. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, all right. That's a interesting looking thing. The, yeah, the drawing's cool. I like it. And um, just so like with the um, pentagram, is that like supposed to be like drawn like on the ground or something, or is it like the rays going in, into the sky and doing something? Uh, it's like they're so the the symbol, whatever it is, the pentagram on the top is supposed to be like something happening like uh i guess it's the sky it's not it's definitely like there's no there's no space you know what i mean it's just black gotcha. but uh, it's, but it symbolizes that these four items are gonna like charge this pentagram up so it does whatever it's supposed to do that's certainly what it looks like okay because, you know, Gilbert has no eye for magic, and right now it's just very pretty pictures. Let's see. Um, what do I speak? Uh, are any of the glyphs around the pentagram infernal? Um, they look Walker. familiar, but they're Maybe not... Abyssal? <laughs> Are, yeah, are, are they are they ha is it halfling language? Yeah. Am I that one? Yeah. It is exactly that. It is halfling language. No, uh, it, it, <laughs> it is some like weird dialect of infernal, um, and it it basically seems to say like you you can pick out some of the the um, you know how like English words have a root, uh, and sometimes you can tell what a word means based off the root. It's mm -hmm. like that. You can recognize some of the roots. Um, it says things like trap, um, hold, um, lock. You can you can recognize those um, sort of portions of words. Trap, hold, lock. Sounds like it's supposed to trap something, hold it down, and we have to lock it. I, I think this is some sort of binding 
ritual. Seems oh, so. But but what's it bind? I, I I don't I don't know. You, you know these ancient tapestries are all the same. They just show a picture with no instructions. <laughs> you think they'd be smart enough to tell you what it's supposed to do? That's what a tapestry is. <laughs> well, if we're going to stick around in town, perhaps we can find someone who knows about things like this. Oh, 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 uh, Lyra, did you ever find the library? They may know stuff about this if you found the library. I, 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 I kind of left you and helped um, thrust their Phoebe fee elves. I did find a library, actually, though I don't remember where it is as a player. Hestia <laughs> might know who to talk to. We want to talk to somebody. That's possible. Do, do you remember the the noble that Hestia told was in charge of this city? Does uh, anyone you remember? remember? Let me and, um, let me write that down for you. Another I've... noble thrust? Have, haven't we had our field with them? Well, no. I'm I'm just thinking if we actually talk to the person who is in charge of this place. Or at least know who he is, and curry favor with him. Then it doesn't really matter what Aldo does to us, because Ak Akar Akaro, Akarho. Like Akaro. like you basically would say it like Akaro, Akaro. Akaro. Well, if if we can if we can buddy up with Akaro, we you know make some friends. Uh, I mean, he's probably hard to get in contact with, like but it's something we should definitely think about if we're going to uh -oh. stay. That is. Uh, I don't know if you're, th you're you're really friendly and all, uh, and all Mr. Thrust, but uh, you, you're not great at making friends. Well, only when people are dicks. Oh, 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 I'll do it. I'll, I'll make our friends for us. See, Gilbert will do it. Oh, no. As long as this guy isn't a dwarf, we're fine. Out of curiosity, did they find out what race the, the guy is or just his name? Uh, oh, no one, no one knows what reason. No. Okay. This is going to be a disaster. I'm, I'm just waiting for <laughs> Jen to really F with me and like, like everybody I see is like a dwarf. Like, well, so if you... Worst <laughs> curse ever. Perhaps we should split up and me and Gilbert can try to learn about a, a car hole and you guys can find out about the tapestry. How does that sound? I mean, we can't even read what's on, on the glyph things. It's all scribbly uh -uh. gook to me. Why could these things can't be in halfling-ish? I don't know. I mean, come on. Certainly there had to be some halfling wizards way back in the day. Should uh, one of us see if there's an outgoing boat? Not saying we're going to need to leave immediately. That is a good idea. Mm. I'm well, just saying when... if you leave there and you're like, we have to run right now, like last time... We can um, see if Constiglione is still in town. Yeah, he, he was nice. <laughs> he didn't he he didn't mind it when um too, she got sick. Question. Where are you? We are um, at the tavern. I think we're at this L the L shaped tavern, I forget the name. Sorry, it's it's the expensive one. Well, okay. I know me the and Thrust are and yeah. I thought, uh, I think Lyra is at the one below us. Yeah, because right they there. let Nyx come in with me. Tucci's back here in the stables. Uh, we had to give our horses back to Aldo, didn't we? Yeah, I think that was part, part yeah, of the so, agreement. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. That was enough. indeed part of the agreement. So when you stabled them, because you, you took them from... Um, you took them from like over, ah, oh, damn it, where it says, like where Thrust is now, actually. Where yeah. Is now. Yeah. So yeah, we would have we would have given the horses back before we talked to Aldo. Um. But yeah, so you, I mean, what do you guys want to do? I'm I'm all for just going hardcore into the tapestry or hardcore into figuring out what the deal is here or just leaving, um, or we can split up. Uh, Thrust is literally. Whatever you guys want to do, Thrust will do it. Uh, Gilbert's kind of interested in meeting this um, noble Akarho. Akaro. Akaro. And seeing uh, like, if he's any better than Lord Aldo. 
that's a good point. Maybe he's in on it. We gotta find out if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Because if he's a bad guy, then I then I say we, you know, do whatever Scoodle. we want. Well, I mean, to be fair, I mean, like, if even if he's not very nice, I mean, you can't be nice to everybody in a situation like this. I mean, there's a lot of people that need a lot of things right now. You just have to be nice to the right ones. That's true. And if my nicest doesn't work, that's why we have thrust. What uh? What time of day is it? I suppose this would be in the morning. The next morning mm -hmm. we're talking about so, it. Yeah. Okay. Next day after Aldo, we were like you know a little bit hungover, <laughs> eating some breakfast, talking over stuff. So, you're in the Golden Stove, or at least some of you are, and you're eating your breakfast and chatting about what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And um, I need you guys to just roll me a perception. All right. I would have gone over for breakfast, I believe. Sounds good. Anybody Since wants to I'm, don't want to be all alone. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, I'm, I'm having that? the best Native oatmeal one and um, <gasps> Holy oatmeal shit. and raisins ever. Rolled a 17. Oh, nice. Let's see oh, what I got. Is the one mm. oh, uh, uh, Gilbert, you're getting oatmeal all over Lara's eyes. <laughs> I don't have to eat it like that. <laughs> well, I just wipe my face off. Why? You, you all, besides Lyra, uh, actually, so uh, Thrust and Wesley here, some people who are chatting at one of the other tables in closer toward the lounge. You guys are more close to the bar. Uh, and the they're chatting about. Uh, trade and it seems that there are two merchants uh who have been put up here and you overhear them and you they're saying like you know, one it's two two men uh one is a human and one is some sort of a halfling and so the human says to the halfling oh man i am not going back out there they can't pay me enough and the halfling says i heard jim didn't even come back from the last mission and uh, the human says, oh, poor Jim. He's got to deal with so much shit lately. And the uh, halfling says, yeah, Jesus. Jim has a heart of gold. <laughs> and then... where the DM starts talking in third person. <laughs> <laughs> the human says, oh, it's those blasted pirates, those elves. They're everywhere out there, I swear. And they they go on and continue their conversation. And only thrust and will hear it? Yeah. I look to Wesley and I'm like I give him a look of Did you hear that? I look terrified and I try to look like I didn't. I fail. Oh, one more thing. The um the halfling says, you know, the king should really do something about that. He's, or excuse me, um, the lord should really do something about that. He's supposed to be in charge of the city, and yet he can't facilitate trade. What kind of leadership is that? I go over to talk to them. Point, yeah. Okay. They look at you like, well, who the fuck are you? Hello, gentlemen. Oh, 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 Sorry oh, oh, oh. to uh, interrupt you. Um, I was overhearing your discussion. Uh, you said pirates. Is this like on the ocean? Uh, there are elves harassing your trade? Could you maybe give me some more information? If you wouldn't mind. They look at you and they're, they're kind of like a little bit wary because you kind of just like spied on them. But I, I, I don't. We weren't trying to, to spy on you. We were just he listening puts a to hand your breakfast. The, the human puts a hand up at you and like, like it's okay. And says, I, our friend Jim, he went out, Captain Jim, if you will. He uh, never returned from his last voyage. No one knows what happened to him. And uh, uh, is this we're starting to get worried. Is this between the mainland and the island? I, in the channel. We are and south. Well, sorry, south. 
And south. And south. Well, we ourselves were attacked by bandits. Uh, you said they were elves that attacked you? Yes. Lately, it's been more and more elves as they uh, get displaced from their home. Yeah, it's yeah. troubling times. The pirates but... always used to be the green skins and the, the humans and from, uh, from Ix. And uh, you would get a good solid mix but nowadays all i've been hearing is elvish 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 interesting I suppose desperate desperation does something to a man yeah what, what are they targeting anything specific i couldn't help but notice the price of metals kind of going through the roof right now oh you bet your ass there hasn't been solid shipment of metal into this city in at least a week i've heard they they've been targeting cargo ships big ships, especially those who were stupid enough to not go with a, an escort. This place is an island. One would assume that trade between the mainland is very important. Aye, that's correct. Would you if, say... Uh, we don't get more ships coming over across, we're going to have some problems. Do you guys know a car hole? I mean, I know Lord of him. Carho. I know he's in charge. Is it his duty to keep the travel route safe? I mean, I suppose so. He's the one who's supposed to be the presider of the city, right? So, so if I was... He's supposed to be pretty important. So if I was to, say, help him with this pirate problem, he would probably think that I'm a upstanding guy? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to go out there and just start kind of... Cutting down pirates left and right, they laugh at you, they're slapping the table, they think that's the greatest joke. There's been sightings everywhere. I'm telling you, the waters are saturated with them. It's <laughs> not just one or two ships. It's not just one ship, you know, going and taking down everything that comes. There, there are a lot any of them. rumors of them working for or with somebody, is there? Say that again, sorry. There's, there's no rumors of them working with for with anybody is there i mean well uh i've heard a couple of uh names uh the marauders i've heard uh they make it look like they're orcs from far away but they're not uh, i've heard of um the rovers i've heard of uh the salty brigands a couple of different uh and they're all oh, elves well uh the marauders have been around for a long time you've heard of marauders past right Sure. Yeah, well, that's them. They're a little bit bigger, but they sometimes come up over here. Lately, it's been more elves, and they're, you know, the rovers, they're elves. And uh, if they can get a hold of a ship, they certainly know how to throw their weight around once they're out there. I mean, the elves have two cities. Well, they used to. Jeez. God, what the world's coming to. I Where shoot the, a, they were a on the shore. I mean, it's that uh, thrust. I wink at you again and don't know what you're winking at me for. <laughs> <laughs> Not very wise. Both out of character and in character. <laughs> Do you know... So it's just on the open ocean. No one really knows where they have a base do they go to the the other island where the p other pirates are or do the do the elves have their homeland somewhere on this coast well he leans in real close real quiet and he says i've heard of rumors that they're settling on the west no one knows for sure but uh i heard a bard come through a tavern down the street the other day singing about it what was Everyone the wasn't sure whether to take him seriously or not. What was the bard's name? The bard? Oh, I didn't get his name. I was just part of the crowd. Okay. But um, I can tell you the tavern's name. The tavern was the, the Salty Icicle. Stupid name for a tavern, but they seem they want to call him that. They want to call him that. The Salty Icicle. I, I think back on like history books about like ships and stuff and bust out some, some terminology. Uh, uh, d d where, where are there, there, does anyone know if their ships look like they're made fresh out of green wood and pitch, or do they look like they're from a specific area and make, or 
Or are, are they just whatever they find? Well, I haven't seen them myself, the, the uh, human says. And the halfling looks and nods like along like neither have I. And the human says, but I've got a friend who has. He's seen one of them. You may, uh, you may have heard of a uh, pretty uh, recently famous but captain around to here. Buy that man Brackus. a drink. Brackus Castiglione. Brackus Castiglione. He loves that you know who he is. Brackus is a real man's man. Brackus says he saw a marauder ship and a couple of people on his ship helped to kill an entire ship full of pirates. I heard it was something special. But uh, anyway, anyway, the point is, the man is a serious guy, and he knows what he knows. And he knows that the marauders had a ship real low. I'm telling you, real low in the water. They don't make them like that unless you're going to war with them. And they need them to go fast and not get hit by cannonballs. And so... You know what that means? And he looks at, at Wesley like he's supposed to know. That, um... Th th that they're going... If it's loaded down, they've got a lot of cargo. No, 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 no. He, he like, puts his hand up over his face. He's like, no. It, it's low in the water because they made it to sit low in the water so it doesn't get hit by cannonballs. Now, what kind of ship is that? It's a warship. You don't make those unless you're at war. So yeah, I think they're true. starting. The moderators have have found some shipbuilders and started making them like they're going to war. But I you're... have a feeling they may be selling them to anybody who uh, who has the coin. I, I I look very distraught and I'm like, but the elves had to leave because the orcs left where they were to live where they're at. And orcs don't really have a lot of ships except for the pirates who, who are they going to war with well they're pretending to be orcs they're not actually orcs I, I i know but the orcs don't have a navy that's what i'm saying they were in the mainland so yeah what like who wesley's right why are they building warships who are they going to war against or is it just well, like uh, a money-making scheme seems like it's for making money, honestly. Uh, if the better your ship is, the more likely you are to take other people's ships. But they, a warship, they'd be able to sink a ship but not, not loot it. They'd have to have other ships to hold the cargo. You said the warships sit really low. That's right, yes. So if the marauders are selling ships to other pirates, if we go in and stop the marauders or kill their shipbuilders, they won't be able to do that anymore, and there won't be any pirates. They're laughing at you like that's the funniest <laughs> thing you fucking said. They say, oh, you're just gonna go cutting down pirates again, aren't ya? Oh, looky here. A very this quietly little guy calmly. thinks he can go out and slay the entire marauders. It wouldn't be the first time we killed pirates. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you guys are Killing pirates all the time. Well, uh, yeah. I well, glare at him. Yeah, I glare at them as well. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I think you've been very informational. I, uh... I'll I put hope... a gold coin on the counter. The Just halfling so... picks it up and go, bites it and goes, Why, thank you. We're happy to be of assistance. If you hear anything else... About these pirates, I'd like to hear more. I also... All right, we'll keep our ears open. And I... about trade, if you hear a shipment of lead or or iron and the like, be interested. All right. Also, we heard about Brackish Constiglione and his crew and passengers. Uh, we heard the names of the uh, those passengers who helped and uh, their names were thrashed the sharp wesley gilbert hestia lira is that all of us Ale uh no, no alex, alex wasn't there. there yeah alex wasn't there yeah, yeah. 
Oh. So, you know, you could spread that rumor around. I mean, I've heard that they're very, very, very capable fighters. That's what the that's what the rumors say. Good to know they have names. Yeah. How did so, you hear about it? Oh, you know, all these things travel around and I like tap my loot and I'm like, I'm a bard. I hear stories and I share them. People tell me things. I, they they I, just I realize that you're having and they're like, ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's... It's at this point, um, I'm over at the bar, suddenly I get the biggest belch I ever have, and all of a sudden you just hear, okay, there's no oatmeal, me, I mix it in this bowl. Can I, can I, have, a, can I have a new one? <laughs> the bartender laughs at you, thinks you're a fucking weirdo, and brings you another bowl. Of... <laughs> then I just dive into it. Both hands. I'm oh, yeah. assuming there's going to be a festival where, like, instead of a pie eating contest or all you can eat ramen contest, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be like, oh, you can eat the post oatmeal. <laughs> That'd be With a lot just harder, portraits though, on the wall. Oatmeal so filling. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be, so be a lot hard. harder. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, yeah, we go back to uh, our friends who are stuffing their face full of oatmeal. Um, well. He is. Well, I'm just kind of here. She, You're witnessing the trying, carnage. Yeah, she's trying to avoid the cast off as I. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, Slayer, why, why do you look out. so horrified and disgusted? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You're just. Are you still using your hands? Oh yes, I am. You yeah. need a lot oh. for a little guy. I, I can tell. Well, I, I'm sure Poochie will clean your shirt later. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, he he always does. He likes oatmeal too. That's good. And the, and also through this entire time, you know, as I'm eating, I'm also like drinking my mug of morning ale. And as you look at the bowl and the mugs, like the outside is, is encrusted in oatmeal. Because I, I, I go with my hands. Love like... that you drink morning ale. <laughs> the way to do it. I I, I try to uh, distract myself from the horrific sight of your breakfast by uh talking to Lyra and uh, Mr. Thrust and go uh, um, it, it sounds like not even the seas are safe right now. What's going on? What? Okay, I'm sorry, let me redo that. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Did they have something important to say about the seas? Pirates are acting up some new Clans try new groups of pirates seem to be elves, and they have warships now. Clans? Only dwarves have clans. This is a dwarven conspiracy over again. Thrust, I told you. Perhaps the the, the main point is that um, a carho is in charge of keeping the waters safe. So perhaps if we want to get his favor, we can go pirate hunting or figure out how to stop the shipbuilding. I think that would be more important, honestly. I mean, we could we could sink some ships, but that's risky and there'd just be more later, wouldn't there? Exactly, now, yeah. There, there's now, no shortage of elves. Now, so, you said elves. Are these are these the same elves we helped be earlier and we told them to be nice or else we, we, we'd be back? We don't they, know. They could, be. they could be. And either way, I... I don't, I could see them being aligned. We have a lot of leads right now. We could go to the elves and talk to them. We could go talk to Brackish and see if he will take us on the ocean to just go around. We could talk to a, a carho. We could just ask to this. There's a, apparently a bard at the, the salty icicle that we could talk to but to get more information. But, I mean, I think... The most important thing for us, if we're going to stay in town, is to make friends with Lord Akarho. And this might be the best way for us to do it. And maybe we can earn some coin while we're doing it. I mean, we wouldn't be... I think you're right. Uh, mm -hmm. Was the icicle in town? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but if we talk to the bard first, we, we might look and really know more than we would otherwise. That would be a better impression, first impression. Hmm. I we wouldn't we should be get like information first. Looking for, sure. for work and then being like, "Oh yeah, we know who to talk to. We just haven't done that yet because we want money first. It's it's. It, I think it would be better if we talk to him. Yeah. I 
think that is a very good idea. I think that I am not going to go talk to this bard, though. I think I am going to ask about Lord Akarho. Uh, just generally. If... Uh, uh, uh... Yeah, ask about the other one too, Lord Aldo. And Lord Aldo, I can I can find information around. I I think uh, well, there's a very pretty establishment a- across from where we live. Um, I don't know if I can get into it, but I think like someone important has to live there, right? That's this building here was you you described it as being like really fancy. The big it's uh, made of stone where most everything is made of like maybe a stone base but the rest of it's wood this Wesley, is like a stone building okay his face gets darker and he's like you you mean the, the place where across town with the, the, the red red lights and... no 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 like just across the road here this giant building it's like the biggest oh. thing in town I'll, I'll i'll go talk i'll just talk if they've got servants or whatever i'll go talk and see if i can find information or you know, maybe get a meeting with this guy, and yeah. That, but, that certainly sounds more reproductive. I, I mean, productive than uh, yeah. That, that's that's a good idea. I just I know with barge that we sort of get out of control when there's more than one of us in a room, and it'll end up with us, you know, singing and drinking and all that sort of junk. So I'm just I don't think it's a good idea for me to uh, go. Um, I I, I Miss Lyra, I I I, I heard. Bards are kind of randy. If you want to go, you might be helpful, but it might be a little uncomfortable for for you. Jesus Christ. I'm sure I can handle myself, Wesley. I think Wes- Wesley, sh- Wesley should go to talk to talk to the bard because I don't really know what to talk to him about. I mean, I'm, I mean, I don't really know what to talk to him about. Oh, if you think it's best, I guess. And it's at this point, I'm actually like licking the inside of the bowl. Gilbert, you, you got it in your hair. <laughs> he'll he'll uh, that... he'll get that later. Or Poochie will. <laughs> oh, you look like you've got dandruff everywhere. Ah, uh, oh, yes, yeah, yes. Oatmeal is good for that. Well, so if Wesley, you would you like me to go with you to talk to the bard, and you can fill me in on what all they said on the way. Uh, if you don't mind, I, I, I kind of like not traveling alone anymore. It's it's, it's nice. And uh, if you wouldn't mind joining me, Gilbert, we can maybe find oh, out some information on these lords. Oh, is Alex ever gonna wake up? Just give me a few a few minutes here to go freshen up, because the lords don't really like my oatmeal look. And I put down the bowl, take a big drink, and I like brush up to 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 my room to take a bath. Like then, like like twenty minutes later, I come on down, nice and nice and refreshed. And you oddly notice that as I come down, I'm like coming down, and like my feet have like you know wet boot prints on the way down. Hmm. Uh, actually, because you take a bath with your clothes and boots on. <laughs> no, when I take a bath, uh, the bath are so big, I'm so small. Uh, to me, it's like a small lake. So I jump from the bed into the um, bath. Making like a cannonball, so pretty much everything gets wet in the room. Oh my god. Okay. It's like he washes his clothes at the same time. It's very efficient. <laughs> I, I see a small drip coming from the ceiling. And I, I don't think Alex slept in an inn. He didn't sleep with you guys last night? I thought he was supposed to sleep in my room when we left off. But I'm not sure. I think he said he was going to sleep on the streets. I think so. Yeah. Hey, hey, Wesley. I don't remember. Maybe he's taken up as a ran as a randy bard. Ha <laughs> ha. Maybe he's the guy we're supposed to talk to. Wink, wink. Maybe. I, I, don't, I don't. I don't know what god he serves. Maybe he did. <laughs> Before we leave, I'm gonna pay uh, for another night's accommodation. Just because it looks like we're going to stay for another night, just so that they hold our room. Okay. Um, so I'll take that from Groot Loot. So that's twenty for us. Uh, and then I assume we'll do that for Lyra and Wesley, as well. Okay. So yep. that is fifteen gold. 
which is that. So, twink. Okay, that's all done in the group loop and stuff. Cool. Uh, cool. So, who wants to do their thing? Do you want to? You can do the bard thing first, and then we can do our. We probably would have left versa. while Gilbert, or yeah, Gilbert was taking his bath. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Do you know where this place is that the bard is? Uh, somewhere to the west of town. Okay. I guess we'll see if we can find it. Yeah, we'll uh, go across the bridge to the market and ask around. So you uh, you get to the market, and you see there's... It's, it's pretty early, but... Like this, uh, this piece. Oh, I don't think I'm on the right layer. Hold on. This, like, can you see that? My ping is. Yeah, like, I can up. see it. All right. So you can see that there's like a square in the middle. That is sort of like a constructed stand, uh, the kind of thing that they would have hangings on or whatever. And you see, there's a little bit of a crowd, but it's pretty early, so there's only like a couple people. And you you can see someone who has a piece of paper uh, and is standing on, on the stand. Uh, and he is dressed in a white uh, robe, essentially, it's like tunic. That would be the right word. And it has uh, a sort of symbol on it, which I'll draw for you in a moment. Um, and it says, or he's saying on his... From reading from the paper, he says, Hear ye, hear ye! And the crowd goes, Do you really need to say hear ye, hear ye every time? And he, he looks down, because there's only like five people there. He's like, Listen, man, I'm just trying to do my job. And he goes, All right, all right. <laughs> and <laughs> he, goes, he looks back down at his paper. He goes, Where was I? All right. Hear ye, hear ye. Yep. And he says, It is the decree of King Akarho that. All people of the city are now subjects of his rule. It is time and necessary that we have the resources at our disposal to deal with the protection of the city and its waters. And he flips the paper over, you know, like goes to the next page or whatever and says the council of lords has been disbanded and will now be known as the small council the small council will be consistent of few lords who will be at uh, the disposal of a car of king akarho who will be now in charge of all of the people of the Dun. And he uh, goes on to the next page and says, the small council will consist of Lord Arho Forrester to the east, Lord Bennington <laughs> Fizzlebottom to the west, and uh, Lord uh, damn it. I'm out of names, guys. To I've only Lord, to to Lord Damn it! Ah, nice ring to it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Aldo. Aldo. And uh, uh, what, what race is this last lord? I can help with names. Um, he's a dwarf. Barnabas Brickgut. Barnabas Brickgut. That's who he is. <laughs> and he's he's to the north. He's new. He's new. <laughs> Oi, I'm new in town. Yeah, that's his that's his voice. And so um that's that's what he says for the small council. Let's write those names down so that we have them all. Aldo. Yep. Okay. Bennington. Brick gut. Another dwarf for the conspiracy. 
that is only yeah. in Gilbert's head. So those are the names he said. And he he says, and now I'll be back to read this in a half an hour. And he gets down off the stage and walks I'll, away. I'll, I'll wave him over. Uh, he sees you and he like lets out this big sigh like it's going to be a long fucking day. And he walks over to you a couple, couple feet out of his way. He says, um, yeah? Uh, doing this all day has got to make a man thirsty, um, and I'll give him a gold. He suddenly perks up. Um, I, I, I'd hate to take up more of your time and voice, but uh, I, I was wondering, uh, how does that change the way the Lord's functioned? Our, 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 I mean, I, obviously there's a king now, but would we deal with the Lords if we want to deal with the king? Well, he says, the king... Rule according, he like shuffles his papers around. According to this, he like reads like a specific line. He says, The king shall hold office over all of the done, and the lords shall be levied underneath him, whatever that means. And then he looks back at the paper and says, And the lords shall be beholden to the king. I don't know. They just said that. I don't know why they wrote it again. And those lords shall provide troops, order, food, taxes, and anything else asked of by the king. So the king tells the lords what to do, and the lords do it. That's what it says. Oh, okay. Um, no, make sure you, you, you drink up, and, and so you don't lose your voice. Um. Thank you. I'll uh, I'll do that, and he. Like sure. tips the gold piece at you and walks away. Lyra, this is much really happier bad. than than before. That's like more pay than he gets all week. Hmm. This is really bad. Why is it bad exactly? If we get to the king and gain favor with the king, Aldo because, can't do anything to us because he's under him now. Because it sounds like the king won't really deal with the common folk, and you got to deal with the lords to get close to the king and. One of the lords hates us, and and they're gonna they're gonna draft people and constrict people into service without their. Uh, we'll I start hyperventilating. Out. We'll figure it out, Wesley. Calm down. Anyway, we we need to make one of the lords like us, and we're not doing great at that. Well, if we meet with the lords and kind of push thrust to the back, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> Maybe he won't threaten the rest of them. One, one, one can hope. Oh, I forgot to ask him where the, where, where, where the, bar was. <laughs> He's gone. That's true. We can ask around though. There's more than one person around here. There's not a lot, but sure, we can find someone who knows. Or we could just wander around aimlessly. <laughs> Both work. Is there like a a street urchin that just saw me tip him a a gold? There's uh, it's really early, so the street urchins are kind of asleep. You see, like, one to the north of the bridge on the west bank where you are. He's like kind of asleep on the wall, and um, it's too early for him. And there's a couple others stirring, but they're mostly like sitting down. And they're in like the alleyways still. They're not really out out in the open market. They don't want to get kicked out or kicked around or something. But you can see some people starting to shut up shop in the market. Like, Maybe like if we just went up to a random shopkeeper and asked, I'm sure they'd know. Okay. Wasn't it like around here where I got the meat for Nick's last time? Yeah, it was. Uh, I want to say... I don't remember exactly which building. I think it was I'm the one I'm pretty the sure it was this little one. All right, that's the one. <laughs> My memory's not that great, but I'm pretty sure. No, hold on, that's the one. Okay. Uh, does it look open? Um, it looks... There you go. It looks like uh, he's... He's sort of um, un uh, unlocking the door and 
doing the thing where like so his windows fold up and they're like tables uh when they fold down and then they fold up at the end of the night and become like wall like covering the window uh and so he's like undoing all of the hinges and things like that his his shop is kind of fancy you can tell he's got some really nice meat hey wesley i bought from this guy before to get nick some food maybe he'll know something and i can get nick's food while we're at it that that sounds good so i'm gonna go up to the shopkeeper okay you walk over to him and he's like not paying attention to you so his back is to you and he's like not doing his thing excuse me sir you kind of spook him a bit he doesn't expect people this early he goes oh what oh oh it's you i remember you're the one with the cat looks yeah. down nix is with you right yeah and he's like she stays with me unless it's raining <laughs> he's looking at the cat like oh man that's a big cat <laughs> looks back up at you and says what can i do for you uh, i need some more meat for nix oh, and no i kind of gesture to the cat and what uh, what are you looking for lost too you're lost uh, well you just... found me Uh, we're actually looking for a tavern as well. If you about it, what was the name of it again, Wesley? The, the, this early. The salty icicle. You're gonna go there this early? Uh, we don't have a problem. Uh, we're just there's... looking for somebody. I'm not a yeah, drunkard. There's someone we need to talk to. I get a little well, uh, drunk. I'm. The... That's the kind of place that'll serve you this early. So if you do need a place, you could go there. Um, he points down the this way and says well uh over that bridge and uh if you keep going down the street you'll see it on the left it'll be in the middle of the second block no okay. down the street yeah there you go yeah and uh he so said he would looks it be you. that little building <laughs> right there which one where like out of character I know, uh, I can't see your ping. One of the smaller ones? No, no, to the left. I pinged both of them. Oh. Like, okay. That's enough to find it. No. Yeah, we'll find it's it. It's in that area, for sure. He's, he's definitely telling you to go to that. And he looks at you again and says, What kind of meat did you need? Uh... What do you have a lot of for a more A lot of for what? For more of a cheap price. He looks and goes, uh, that'd be the sausage. Oh, and she he, seemed like, to like that a lot, so... He goes back and he's like, you know, getting some of his cheaper sausage out. He's like, how much do you need? Uh... I don't actually know how. Well, just tell me out of character. Sausage works. No, I really yeah, yeah, like yeah. in out of character. I have no idea how people buy like how the, many like, sausage. How like, many pan like, directions? Yeah, yeah, just that's what all I need. Like how much? Oh, how okay. Many, how many meals worth like, do you need? Like seven. Okay, so you tell him you need about seven sausages, and okay, uh, they're really big, and he pulls them out. You know, uh, cuts it at the, the the part where it's like connected. Hands you the link in a in a sort of uh, rounded up like like a rope almost. You know what I mean? Where it's mm -hmm. like uh, curled up, and puts it in like a piece. Of, like he puts it in like a a paper bag of some sort. Gives it to you and says, "That's uh, that's seven silver." Okay. Here you go, and I hand it to him. And now that's still pretty good sausage. You said cheap. That's my cheapest, but I don't sell cheap meat, all right? Yeah, that's perfectly understandable. I just don't have a bunch of gold to blow at the moment. I know the feeling. <laughs> anyway, and uh, enjoy the salty icicle, you freaking weirdos. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'll start head heading towards where he said. Okay. Uh, seven. So you go down the street over to there, okay. and uh, on your left you see a, a sign hanging 
from a building, uh, which I can tell you is. That says the salty icicle. And the sign is an icicle that like doesn't have any sort of semblance that it is salty. It's just an icicle and it has those words on it. It's like a triangle and someone's painted it. And uh, the outside looks pretty run down. It's definitely made of wood. It's kind of rickety. Um, it's not that far away from the smelly part of town. And it's uh, it's also just a little bit uh, barren because it's so early no one's around. Uh, we'll, we'll go in. Yep. Okay. You go inside. You see the barkeep is at the bar. Looks at you with a... Uh, you know, he's squinting at you like, what the fuck are these people doing in my bar at 7 a.m. or whatever it is. And he says, how can I help you? I look at Wesley because I don't know the bard's name. I have forgotten it. <laughs> uh, oh, we're, we're looking for a, a, a halfling bard. We, we hear he, he, he visits this establishment regularly. Well, uh, there was one last night singing and yelling, getting people all riled up. And, uh, you know, I'd throw him out because he's kind of a nuisance. And he's not that good of a singer, but he uh, he pays in with good coin and not going to throw away some good coin. Anyway, uh, he he's not here at the moment. He uh, doesn't stay here. He you, just likes to drink here for some reason. Do you know where, where he's staying? And could you remind me what his name was? I don't know where he's staying, but uh, I think his name was Randy. Okay. Randy. <laughs> Is that because Will yes. said Randy earlier? That's what his name is now. <laughs> I'm Randy, baby! Yeah! Oh, God. Justin <laughs> Powell is lovely. Oh, my goodness. That mojo. His, and, uh, his, his he number one like... is, Ain't no joke about my mojo. Uh, that rhymes better in my head. <laughs> it's great. So the, the bartender says, I think it was uh, Randy. Yeah, I think that was it. Uh, I don't really know who he is, honestly. He's only been here a couple of nights. Do you think he'd come back again tonight? Well, he's been here the past two. I don't see why he wouldn't. About what time does he usually come in? Oh, the same time everybody else. Just after everyone gets off of uh, their duties. Should be a little after sundown. You know, that's when people start getting riled up. Okay. And it's the springtime, so sundown is still, uh, like, pretty early. What, what, what like type of music instruments does he play? Oh, uh, a lute. Most bards only play lutes nowadays. They're the hip instrument. We'll keep an eye out for a, a Randy halfling with a lute. <laughs> All right, you do that. Uh, look at Wesley. Do you think maybe we should go to the library? Maybe look up the lords a bit more? I'm sure there's got to be something on the king. The new king. New king, but still. Did you hear that pigeon? <laughs> Tapestry. <laughs> Tapestry. Huh? Tapestry. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, also look up some things about the tapestry. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We could. It'd kill some time until uh, are, are, are you down. Are you bookish? Uh, I read a lot. Yes. I I do too. Okay. Um. Well, I I could help you. I could go back to the forge. No, I'll help. 
Well, if you want me to go to the library by myself, you can go to the forge. That's fine. I'm sure I'm not going to get into any trouble at a library. Not with Nyx. I don't think he would. That's a decent point. But watch out for Randy Halflings, though. Yeah, I'll look out for the halfling we're looking for. Uh, <laughs> Tim said he's about to... He's about to what? Show up. Oh, good. Tim? Cool. Uh, we'll probably pass him waking up in a gutter somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> That'll okay, uh, so what's next? Um, uh, I'll go to the, the blacksmith and work on something. Okay. I'm heading to the library. Okay. So let's do the back of this blacksmith first and get it out of the way. Um, uh, I'll, I'll ask to rent the forge again, use more of the bar, and I'm not working on the casing. I made the barrels. I'll just be working on the rough mechanics of it, the, the, the raw shaping putting holes in the pieces, and then later I'll just be filing them down so they all fit together properly. So I'll still have to make a housing for it later. Okay. Um, you don't have a, a blacksmith in this town yet, I'm pretty sure. That's right. But they're easy to find in a city. You just look for the smoke from the forge. Indeed. Probably would have tried to notice one on the bridge. So, this early, no, there is no real smoke coming out of anybody's shit. Everyone's still. Uh, do do you know of a, a a forge or a smithy that's going a little slow right now? The barkeep was like, who had like walked away, turns back and is like, Are "You talking to me?" And he comes back over and he's like, "What?" Do, do you know of a, a a smithy who's kind of short on work at the moment? Well, I mean, all of them. None of them have any metal. Oh, yeah, uh, well, could you direct me to one kind of nearby? Nearby? Uh, well, do you want a good one or a bad one? Oh, I... I, I, I uh, one that wouldn't mind me renting out the facilities. That's a bit strange. Well, uh, the best ones live near the guilds. Uh, some of them even work at the guilds. And uh, so... the worst ones tend to live farther away from the guilds, more towards the school. I'll, I'll head towards the guild. That'd be around the, the dragon's chamber, right? Yeah, the dragon's chamber is a guild. Okay. Yep. So you go over oh. there. And okay. you see uh you can see from, from in front of the dragon's chamber, you can see uh that they have a sign that it says that there is a uh smith there, like as part of the guild. Um as like a service to guild members. And then they also have like you can see down the street, there's like a sign over here for one, and uh, you know maybe you could find more. Yeah, I'll head that way. Okay, so you you head farther down this way, and um, my ping is really freaking out. You head like down this street, and uh, this building here is a uh, is a shop. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. Oh, I'm on the wrong damn layer. As usual. <laughs> so you head down this street. And All right. This this building here, this second to last, is pretty uh, pretty big, and it's a shop. You can see that the it's definitely a forge. It's just opening up, uh, and the guy is sort of sitting down and looking at his anvil like, God damn it, and you know, sort of blank look on his face like he's real worried. Oh. And he it's a it's a human. Um, He's the store seems pretty old, but but it's not run down. It's just older, um, like the architecture isn't new or anything like that. Uh, and so he seems like he's been, or at least the shop's been here for a while. And also, it's it's relatively nice. Uh, there's mo like a forge, and there's also like multiple buckets of water that are meant to be for like different metals so he don't he doesn't mix them and like he's got like lots of different things that you can tell like he, he's been doing this for a while he's clearly got quite a bit of tooling uh he's made some money uh, excuse me there sir ah yes what can i do for you i i, I couldn't help but notice that business is a little slow right now uh could, could i could i rent out 
a spot to do a little bit of work. Oh. I've not had that uh, asked of me. He says, what are you, like an apprentice? Uh, uh, no, my, my, my pa was a smith, but I, I kind of work on unusual things that that I, I, I kind of... I, I, I could tell by your setup you're really accomplished, but I, I, I prefer to do it myself. Oh, well. it, it means more that way, doesn't it? If you're paying, I suppose it's all the same. Uh, I certainly can't afford to be renting out my tools for free. No, oh, um, oh, of course, sir. I do have an apprentice shop right behind here, and he, like, points, he, like, waves. There's, like, a divider, and you can see on the other side there's actually an entire other setup. It's much more modest, but there's an entire other setup with a small forge, a smaller anvil, um, like it's supposed to be for his apprentice. And but, he says... Uh, would work best. I mean, I, I don't need a lot of heat, I, and I need it kind of focused for what I'm doing. Oh, well, here you go. Normally, I have my apprentice here, mm. but uh, he's taken uh, a day or two off. He said he wanted to go traveling up the river, and, you know, kids do that, and it's all right. He's earned his money. He can spend it how he wishes. The, the, and uh, up North is getting a little rambunctious. What do you if mean? Don't mind me saying, river and roads aren't as safe as they used to be. I, I, I'd, if w when he comes back, I, I'd keep a closer watch on him a, a little bit. Oh well, thank you for the advice. Uh, what kind of trouble have you seen over there? Uh, we we did a bit of work for one of the lords, or I guess the council members now. Um, They're still called lord, just so you know. Uh, the, we, 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 we were cleared out some unruly wildlife that were in the area and oh yeah that's been a lot of uh, a lot of the work on the boards nowadays no one wants a damn smith well I will keep an eye on him thank you for the advice I, uh, anyway you can uh, you can rent all the, these tools here uh, all day uh, through the night, if you want, for one gold. I do it. That's a good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. He likes you. I'll, I'll talk shop and like tell him a couple of secrets. But he's well established. But they're they're like unusual ways to make a really good hitch for a cart. Kind of just talk he, shop while I'm working. Yeah, yeah. He likes it. He he thinks you know he he finds that you're a good friend, uh, and he he thinks that you know more than you should, you know, for your for your experience. Uh, kind of would you like a roll? No, you're fine. I mean, for the the tinker check. Oh yeah, you need to do that. Twenty three. Ooh, nice. Fantastic. You make your uh, your progress, and then some. So a day and a half or whatever progress. Yeah, I, I make all the the mechanical stuff, but I don't I don't have them polished and like really fitting. It'll take a lot of filing to get it all cool. all where it needs to be. But I can do that on the road. Cool. So you'll be doing that all day. And um, you're getting some of the forging out of the way, specifically so that you can do some more on the road without having to have a forge. Uh, and then Lyra went to the library. Do we want to do that next, or do we want to do what anybody else is doing? Uh, I'm easy. Up to you guys. I'm, I'm cool with going with Lyra. And okay. hello, Tim, by the way. Hi, Tim. Hey, Tim. Hi, Tim. We missed you. Hi. Oh, and Will, I think you should keep this guy in your back pocket of places to go to blacksmithing, because that one guy in a small town, he like he took all your cash. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> he's, he's like, lead's more valuable than gold, didn't you know? And I was like, I know, but not really. <laughs> yeah, keep this guy in your back pocket. He seems to be the more the cheaper, cheaper way to go. But, uh, like, we, we get chummy without me even really trying, just talking about stuff. I even tell a couple of blacksmiths jokes. He thinks you're hilarious. He thinks you're the the fucking bee's knees. Um, before blacksmith we did... jokes are just disguised dad jokes. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and that's when the thief said, "No, not a forge. I need a forgery." And we we bust out laughing. <laughs> um, before um, we do the library, can we do what um, Alex has been doing in the morning and and night and stuff? Yes. Just catch up on what he's done. So first of all, Tim, how you doing? You doing all right? I have slept like two hours since Thursday. 
What? Wow. Damn, Holy wow. shit. No How one are you alive that? right now. <laughs> That's no fun. Because I have chugged so many energy drinks. Why? <laughs> so bad. The way I did it was Adderall. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> well, I'm Maybe glad try you... sleeping. Yeah, I'm glad you made it. But sleep is also oh. important. I'm glad we're not no. webcamming. You've got to look bad. I imagine you look Rude. like you're crazy, like I actually look about the same as I always look. You That's pop you on think. the webcam, and everyone just goes, "Whoa, <laughs> whoa, holy shit!" Is it dead? <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, I have a very fluctuating relationship with sleep. Clearly, fair enough. What, what about Alex? What is Alex's relationship with sleep? What happened last night? He oh, that's why you're rolling my sleep. So always sleeping. <laughs> Except <laughs> Alex didn't actually fucking sleep. God damn it. I met a... I fucking yeah. method acting Alex without wanting to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex just went and distributed like 200 gold amongst ton of different refugees over the eight or ten hours of nighttime and told them that noble dudes bullshit, elf rebel leader dudes bullshit, whose name I think I have in a note still. Who's? Oh, by the way, BT Dubs, we have a king now. Yeah, I should he's have bullshit oh, yeah, he too. <laughs> well, let me let so me offend him first. Basically, the announcement was uh, the announcement was that there's a king, a carho now who lives in you guys know that he lives in this big house and uh he's like sort of declared himself king he was just lord of the city but like he's got enough political power now himself king and all the other lords have agreed to be under him or at least a couple of the lords like and there's sort of more of a hierarchy now um which lord it's pretty much the king uh akarho okay. you've not met him okay he is Actually, someone I have in my mouth is just a carho, richest douche in town. I mean, everyone's met at least one carho. <laughs> so, let's see. Hurrah. Hurrah. Hurrah El was, was uh, Lieutenant Elv. Uh, Elf. Hurrah and Aldo are the ones who are bullshit, I think. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you were spreading? Yeah, I'm, so... I'm, I'm letting them know what's going on because I didn't really, I wasn't really as up for agreeing to his bullshit. Just kind of went along with it because, fuck him. So okay. you're bad mouthing two of the lords, and the halfling's yes. gonna hate the other lord. Are you bad mouthing Akaro or just Aldo? Because you don't really know who Akaro oh. is. I don't. I'm no. not doing nothing Aldo with Akaro. I don't know anything with Akaro. Good. Hrock's not a lord, though. He's just an elven leader, like, in the community. I'm just, um, like, it's not as much. Like, I'm just telling them, I'm telling them the truth. It's their fault for being scummy. Okay. And I'm keeping his platinum. Okay. Damn right. <laughs> I signed no contract ensuring my silence. And we we sort of have done like a breakfast scene where you weren't there, so we just assumed that you were like sleeping on the street somewhere or were somebody, <laughs> somewhere. We we just assumed you were out. Mm. So we've passed by you like eight times. It's just you look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, doesn't that lump look familiar? Nah. <laughs> so um, we'll say uh. Turns out that, you know, Lyra walks up to the library and on her way up, remember how I mentioned there was a guy who was like here, who mm -hmm. looked like a street urchin? When you pass him again, and he's starting to stir, it turns out it's actually Alex. And you feel ashamed <laughs> that you didn't recognize him, but then you realize that like, how could you? He looks like shit. Alex blends in really well with just shit. <laughs> with grime. <laughs> <laughs> is he like still sleeping he's stirring he's awake uh, Nyx would probably have went ahead of me and like started licking him or something okay uh, oh that would hurt <laughs> oh big. that wouldn't hurt I can not imagine. Okay. 
Okay, a small cat's tongue is harsh and rough. I can just yeah, imagine it. Yeah, it is rough. It's like sandpaper. It is rough, but... <laughs> I don't know if it'd be necessarily harder just because, you know... It's <laughs> like he's a big it's, cat. It's like, look, look, look where I found him. Like, licks his face like three times and his face is all red. <laughs> and immediately Nick like breaks down into the disgusting oh, hairball. Oh, <laughs> Alex will just instinctively start wrapping his arms around like Nick's neck and start using them as a pillow, but then kind of just wake up and be like, oh, mm, I guess so I fell asleep. Warm. Alex, is that you? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing out here? I'm tired. I was busy. We had beds back at the inn. <laughs> you could have walked back. It's like the toddler. He just falls asleep wherever. <laughs> yes. No. I got really tired walking all over the city. It was a lot of work. I don't really uh, like work that much. What were you doing? Alex explains how he was literally walking all over the city finding the various refugees who looked like not one dude not Karax underlings and basically gave them money and told them that Harak and Aldo were bullshit. Uh, we did tell Aldo that we weren't gonna say anything. I agreed to nothing. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm heading to the library. Would you like to come with, or maybe go back uh, to the tavern and sleep, like, on a real bed? I'll stay here. Nyx is soft. <laughs> I'll tell Nyx to stay there with Alex and head start heading back to the library. Otherwise, it's going to be the easiest assassination ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, I wish D D had cameras. Yeah. Um so you get to the library. Zoom zoom. Alex is on the street, kinda sleeping with the cat kinda curled up. The looking cat's all kind of guarding him, but not not taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so you get to the library and you wander in and everything's very quiet. Just a couple people here and there, uh, you know, scuttling about. Okay, I'm gonna find the librarian. Okay. Uh, you go and find someone who looks like they work there, and you uh, tap her on the shoulder, and she turns around and says, Yes, how can I help you? Quietly. Oh, uh, yeah, I was wondering if you knew where books about the new king would be, uh, previously known as Lord Acro. Oh, uh, well, we don't have anything detailing the new setup because that kind of happened, like, yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I meant just on him in particular. Let me see, and she, like, says, come with me. And she takes you back to, like, uh, a portion of the library <laughs> that uh, says, like, there's like a couple books that you can see with titles on the sides that says like, you know, uh, the the wars uh, of Gait and like there's a couple things that say like, um, maybe like Dunn's political history. <laughs> exactly, like like the politics of Dunn or something like that. And she pulls out the politics of Dunn. And she says, "This is the only one I know about." And she like goes to the back of it and says. It's only got a couple pages on a carho, um, but it should probably help you out. Hands it to you, opened up to the pages. In the okay. preface, there's a joke, a bad joke. And now we're done, Ian's. A history of done. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Burn it. In the beginning, we were done. Tear that page out. It doesn't need to exist. <laughs> and so... She walks uh, away after you I see I was about him. to say before she walks away. Okay, you catch her before she walks away. Uh, also, is there like a particular section I could look at that maybe had some old religious prop 
prophecies or just religious books in general. Maybe some things and some old artifacts. Any kind of history based off that would do. Religious where or religious how? Like what religion are you looking for? Uh, just like in general, where because I don't particularly know. I, I have an inkling that the prophecy may have to do with some sort of religious something, particularly like demons and such. It just, I'm demons not exactly sure how to go about that. Okay, she like kind of squints at you and she's like, um, let me see. And she goes to the other side of the library and pulls out a like a book, puts it back, pulls out another book, puts it back. And she's looking at the shelf and she's like, I know I have something in here on the demons and devils. And she she literally like points at it and she's like, ah, there it is. And it, the title is literally Demons. And, and she pulls it out and opens it up and she's like, yes, this is what I was thinking of. And she hands it to you. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, so I'm just gonna, like, read through these books and, like, research and stuff. Okay. You find out, um, that the Demons and Devils book tells you some things that you mostly already know. Um, the levels of hell, you know, how the different types of demons and devils relate to each other, that kind of stuff. It doesn't seem to have anything specific to the area. So... That doesn't seem to be very helpful. You can continue to look through that section if you want to find something on that. Yeah, I'm going to just continue to look through that section by myself. Okay. Give me an investigation check. Booyah. So you find a book that looks pretty um, useful. And it says, um, Ancient Gite Superstition as the title. And so you pull that out, and when you open it up, the table of contents sort of says, you know, um, Pictish, uh, what do you call it? Um, when something's like a story that gets passed down. Fable? Yeah, fable, something like that. It says like Pictish fables. It says, um, you know, stories of the done, and then it says like, um, Stories of the Hills. And that kind of catches your eye, because that's where you were. Yeah. So you open it up to that page. And it tells you of a few things. Let me get my notes here. He's going to his notes. This is good Calm shit, down. guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is why libraries are useful. <laughs> So the um, it talks about many stories, uh, and it, it it definitely like mentions how um, there used to be both the Dun and the Picts used to have occupied the ter territory in the hills. But every time they go and capture it, it seems like you know luck just doesn't go their way and things happen in such a way that like they end up losing the territory both of them um and they always think it's the other side's fault but it never is and the book details about how it's neither side's fault it's actually the hills themselves as a as a like superstitious entity that are like you know the, the, they're cursed and they're um you know those hills are bad uh juju they're bad for anyone who goes and tries to settle there and no settlement has ever been successful and then it's it talks about how uh there's a few stories about the times of old uh the, it details a um an abandoned fortress a fortress which was set up by the dun uh which was eventually overrun by uh goblins and the goblins decided you know that they were like it was it was like they just were there one day and they just raided the entire place and killed <laughs> everyone and only one or two people escaped uh normally this fortress protected itself with magic uh 
with magic that was uh, clearly divine. That's what it says. Those are the words it uses, clearly divine. And it says that it was particularly um, bright. Uh, what do you call it? Like it would, they had a mechanism, a magical artifact, which would protect the fortress from evil, by shining divine light on all of those uh, who would wish to harm the the, um, the fortress. However, when the when the goblins showed up, they showed up in such force that the divine uh, light did not protect the fortress, and the entire fortress was overwhelmed. One or two people get away, and it talks about how those people told the stories uh, of the fortress. And uh, the fortress has a name, okay. and it's it was uh, so it was a dun fortress built in the hills. So they called it Fort Dunhill. I shit you not. <laughs> <laughs> Does it say, like, the divine magic came from? Like, what deity, what religion? Um, no, it, it doesn't say anything uh, about that. Uh, and there's no pictures going along with the fortress part. Okay. It just says divine and clearly divine. And it uses the it's clearly like it's it's purposely being vague almost. Okay. So no mention of any other type of artifacts, just the mechanism that did the basically a divine shield of the for for the fortress and all that. Uh it's it said artifact and that's all it said. Divine artifact. Okay. Um, in let's see, what you had that book. Um, your investigation was twenty. So you see on the at the uh, end of the page, there's a footnote, and uh, it's it references a figure in the back of the book. So you open it up to the page. And there on the page is a circle which looks like the talisman from the tapestry. And it says that this was a drawing of the uh, divine artifact which held back the evils of the hills. Okay. So I'm assuming that the items on the bottom powered this divine shield or this divine light that helped them the talisman was the artifact is what i'm saying oh okay so the yeah. one little artifact just the talisman the not the, the others talisman. yeah okay yeah that's all it talks about that's cool uh, um yeah and then there's a there was another book you had right yep what was that one called again the politics what was that one about uh... Yeah. The okay. So uh, it talks about how um, it's a very sh small book, very thin. There, uh, and the first page, as you open it up, it says, "Well, there's not a lot of politics." Basically, is what it summarizes. Is like, you know, there's really not very much because, and the only reason I'm writing this is to get started. <laughs> That's what the author says. And oh. uh, so there's only like a few pages. It, it's kind of sad they even bothered to bind the book. And at the end, uh, it talks about Akarho, who is now in, in control. And so mostly the politics are that the Picts are people to the north, who the Dun consider to be barbarous. And the people of uh, the, the south are the Dun, and they're uh, the people that you're among now. And they've been here for quite some time, the both of them have. And there's been wars over long periods of time. Territories changed hands, especially the hills. And uh, mostly the picks stay north of um, the the hills. Uh, there's like a divider, if you look at the map. Okay. Um, in the handout section, there there's another map of uh, the... Oh, the, I didn't put it there. Hold on, let me show you then. So if you look at this map, 
it's it shows a map in the book as well, and it says uh, that am I on the right? Yeah, that like this divider is like up north of this is Pictish territory, and it talks about how the land's a little bit rockier up there. It's a little bit colder, um, and so it's considered less desirable by the Dun. Uh, though the picks seem to be moderately happy staying there. Every once in a while, the picks will come south. Um, and it, it, in the map <laughs> in the book, it doesn't have Hillsbard, and it doesn't have this watchtower. Um, like, they're nowhere to be seen in, in the map there. Is and, Hillsbard the place that we were trying to help out? No. I don't, th- I don't know what you're talking about specifically. We went uh, this way. This is yeah, how we were. The, yeah, the, we. I don't think we ever got anywhere close to Hills to to Hills Bar. That's correct. No, you went. You went just to the the edge of the hill. This is where you were. All right. Like this piece was the farm. And um. So it talks about how it's picked ter- territory to the north, and there's there is only one big city up there, and uh, it's really not as big as the others down south. And then it talks about how they're the picks are you know a barbarous people who don't have any respect for culture or civilization and they they are you know unorganized and they're they're savages and talk shit about them and then it talks about how the people of the dun have been here they have you know culture and tradition and um it talks about chariots and their use in uh, different ceremonies with uh, the kings. Uh, well, not kings, excuse me. But like local lords uh, and pre- like old kings. Kings who held pieces of uh, done, but never the whole thing. And um, now, I guess if you were to, like, you're thinking about it, then I guess Akarho is the first one to do that, right? And so, or at least he claims to own, you know, this piece, right? He's really, he was lord of this, but this is so important to this that he's now been able to declare himself king of all of this. Um, But yeah, these are the cursed hills I was talking about, all this. And then like, this is more of a divider. You can see there's sort of a gap. And then Mm -hmm. uh, what else is there to talk about with the politics? Uh, It talks about how most everybody north of Dunsol doesn't even know what the word politics means because they're all farmers and um, how... Nerf herders. Nerf herders, exactly. And the people of Dunsol, the city has not been around very long and the book is relatively new. And it, it mostly says that, you know, cities are the greatest new thing and, you know, cities, uh, you know, people are by nature a political uh, uh, beings and it uses political in the sense of... Um, its actual meaning, which it derives from a Greek uh, word root, uh, pole, which means city, urban. And uh, so a Greek city is a polis, you may have heard. And so it talks about how, you know, people are political by nature and like how uh, the the Dunsol as a city is this um, new and shining light that is here to save and deliver uh, you know the the nerf herders of of done to new cultured political um, refuge. You know what I mean? It's sort of grandiose. It's yeah. that, like the author is very clearly biased. Yeah, biased and dramatic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Unless it's true, like all good book writers. Yeah. Yeah. He, he gave it his own artistic flair. Yeah. So that's nonfiction writers are not supposed to give the, their own artistic flair. <laughs> They're supposed to stick with the facts. Hey, just Thank hey, you, he, this guy must obviously feel like you know, like he, his talents were not being utilized all the way. Probably. So that's what you found out. Quite a bit of information, okay. I I hope. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I have ideas. Um. So I'm guessing that takes me a decent bit of time reading yeah. through all these books. <laughs> Even though that that first book or the, the 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 political book, the second book was like small, it was dense, and you pretty yeah. much had to read the whole thing to get all of what I said. 
Yeah. And uh, the other one is uh, longer, and the the words are harder to read because it's like older. Um, yeah. And the dialect is different. What else? Hmm. What else is going on? Let's go back to the city. Yeah. Thrust and Gilbert. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we need to talk to the um, to the Lord, what whatever his name is, Achu, Lord Achu. Lord Akaho. <laughs> now oh, Gilbert. Akaho. Before oh, we go, oh, that makes more sense. Before we, so uh, obviously everyone else has left the inn. Um, I was thinking, what parents names their kid Achu? That's just that's just asking them to be picked on it in in, in in school. Well, in human society, the Lord name is actually the family name so his parents were a car hole too yes um gilbert there's a thing that i'm going to try to do to get us in favor with a car hole if you would be okay with this this won't cause us to be put into jail for in, for anything indecent will it no i don't think so not for anything indecent that's for true um, oh okay what do you want to do well, I think we should pretend that you are a halfling noble. Ah, yes. I think, I don't, I, I mean, it's hard to tell what these people on this island know about the world, but you could say you are the leader of Hubhole, perhaps, on a, you know, exploratory, sabbatical, exploring the world sort of shtick. Uh, and I'm your servant, and you seek audience with a card hole. Okay, should we should we bring um should we bring Poochie? Because if I'm a noble, I don't think I'd be walking by myself all the way around town. I think that is probably a good idea, and maybe if there's any like really halfling cultural things that weird people out, you should do that as well. You want to seem alien to this guy, so that uh. You seem unique and exotic. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and I go up and get chained. <coughs> so I've got I've got fine two sets of fine clothes. One of them are like my traveling clothes, and then I have one that I keep in my pack. Uh, and I, I just for like special occasions, and I change into those. So I'm like legit fancy looking. Um, you also put on your sneer. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I will actually go out to like like to where Poochie's at, you know, and I'll spend some time like buffing out his armor and stuff, you know, making it look really nice and shiny. Uh, making sure he's all combed out and looking really good. And as the finishing touches, I give all three of us a dab of perfume. Should you ah, feel yes. up to it, Gilbert? Ready to talk to a lord? I think so, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Should, I bring, bring, should I bring my lance? I mean, you could hang it from your saddle in an ornamental fashion to show that you, you're you a badass. Ah, yes, yes, I am badass. You in, you are indeed guilt. Uh, and I suppose we cross the road and see if we can find an entrance or like a servant to talk to. Yep. So uh, th this area is definitely like the main entrance. Okay. And um, there's sort of a porticos, um, which is surprising because no one in the area usually has money to build something like this. Is it open or closed? It's closed. And you can see all down here, there are windows that are high up, like three stories up, um, but no windows lower. Uh, like, they give a great view of the ocean mm -hmm. because nothing else is that tall. But uh, they don't want to see the people. Okay. And then uh, over here, it's the same deal. And then, like, there's an alleyway this way that comes to the back. Uh, okay. And there's a separate building in the back. Well, I suppose we go, is there, like, guards posted at the Port Cullis? Or... Yeah, so there there would be two guards mm -hmm. who are at the porticullis, and they're not saying anything. They're just standing on either side of the porticullis. Um, oh, I, 
I, I pull out my lute, and as I am, like, pronouncing this, I just, like, strum along to it. And, uh, yeah, I, I yell out to them. Hello, good uh, guards. I am here serving my master, Gilbert Deep Hollow, Lord of Hubhall. We seek audience with Lord Akarhol. Is she in, perhaps? They look at you like... Trying to decide what to think about you. Give me a like a deception check. Dun, 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 deception. I'm okay at that. How'd I go? Seventeen. They're definitely suspicious that it's only two people for a supposed lord, and uh, he doesn't quite look like a lord to them. But he, uh, the the right guard. How? So, go ahead. Um, yeah, am I pretty close to like a stone wall? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, because this is what um, Gilbert does. He's like, yes, yes. Let's let let me also bl 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 bless this fit this my mighty fortress from any danger. And I put out my right right hand towards the wall, and I use brief burst of firebolt to carve like the elven rune of luck on the side of of the building. They look at you and go, like, they're wide-eyed, and they're like, did you just desecrate the king's castle? No, he no, blessed no, no. the king's I... castle. Blessed by drawing symbols on the king's castle. These are they're, halfling like, looking customs. at each other, like, incredulous. Do you know any halflings? This is halfling custom to bless a castle that when you enter it. It's very common, normal stuff here. You, uh, you seem like educated people that should know these things, especially if you serve a lord. And I just look at them. They look at you and they go, that's the king to you. They're, well, I, I was unaware that he's a king. Is, last I heard he was a lord. When did this king thing happen? Is this a, a new development? Yes, but we've been told to enforce the title uh, heavy-handedly. Well, well, I apologize for my ignorance. Uh, we are looking to have audience with your grace. Uh, they look at each other and they go, shit, whose job is this? Uh, I'll be right back then. And one of them goes through, like, goes over to uh, the Porticolos and waves to someone on the inside who then opens it uh, just enough to like have him slip under. Uh, it seems that he's not trusted with a key because there's a door in the middle of it, like an iron uh, as well mm -hmm. with, a, with a lock, but, but it's not um, like he, he clearly doesn't have a key because otherwise he would just would have used that. And so he dips under the portcullis and goes in the castle and you've got a uh, probably about a couple minutes pass by as uh, you're standing there awkwardly with the right guard who's looking at the rune in, that you've carved into the side of the castle. Like, what the fuck is this? Do you want to do anything in those couple minutes or you just want to wait? Uh, I just wink at Gilbert. Like, good job. I, I, I just sit there and try to look all orderly, you know, for a half thing. I mean, kind of try to look look part all the time because you know i i am the hero of, of hub hole so you know i'm trying to have that big old sense of accomplishment over me while we're waiting i would like to ask the guard about the king situation it's like so your your master is the king now how what happened there how, how did that happen was there seems so uh i mean we've been out of town for a bit that yeah, he's uh, he's always been kind of in charge, but it seems that the pirates that have been uh, and uh, by the way, I'm not supposed to talk about this, so don't mention it. But the, it seems that the pirates are giving us enough trouble that he's decided he needs to be able to take action. But you know, I'm just a guard; I don't really know anything. Okay, well, you know, 
Sure, it's good to know a little background before you talk with someone of importance. So thank you for your information. You're welcome. Don't mention it. Seriously, don't mention it, he says. He gives you a real serious look. And the other guard comes back. Uh, and in tow is this very uh, stuffy looking person in a dark, uh, like a almost purple, not quite like bright purple, but like a, a dark, like indigo mm -hmm. robe, uh, which is like a little flowy. And he's very thin and uh, he's got like sort of a, a thin mustache and a thin little like tuft of beard on his chin. Uh, black hair, black everything. He's uh, a human and mm -hmm. he comes and he has very dark eyes, like brown, but real dark. And he looks at you and says, yes, who are you? I introduce my master, Lord Gilbert Deep Hollow of Hubhole. I am Thrust, the sharp, his servant and companion. Yes, servant. You're talking an awful lot for a servant. He turns to he turns to uh, Gimbal. Fuck. Gilbert. Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert? Uh... And he, he God <laughs> fucking damn it. Brian. <laughs> and he, he says Yes. Um I am Severance Schnockbottom and I've been here serving the king for some time. You may have heard of me as the king's secretary. Uh, we are not expecting uh, any sort of guests today. Uh, may I ask why you are dropping by unannounced? Well, I have decided, decided to leave my kingdom to see what the rest of the world has been up to since our last... Since, since we have... I can't talk today. Sorry, guys. Okay. Try again. Since we, since we have been 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 freed from the dwar dwar dwarven dwarven, um, I don't want to call it an, an invasion, but um, insurrection or insurrection, in, insurrection. I yeah. I don't know. Aggression. Aggression. Yeah. Oppression. Since the dwar dwarven aggression, we have come to see how the rest of the world is is faring. And after some of the rumors I I have heard about uh, your area, I become quite quite concerned and wish to talk to your lord about them he's so he's looking at you and he reacted to a couple of things you said he reacted to dwarven aggression with a scoff he reacted to um you, like the you, inference you said he was human right yes okay and he reacted to the thing you said about um sorry uh you mentioned like you know, you've, you're concerned with like the status of like this realm or whatever, and he like scoffed at that too, rolled his eyes. He thinks you're like a joke, and he's like being pretty rude. And he's he says to you, uh, "And do you have any way that I can identify that you are who you say you are? I've not met you before." I am who I am. I do not have paperwork or anything that for some reason the rest of the world seems to require to tell you who, who what one person is Persuade. from another, another person I guess, has. I guess that's deception deception <coughs> halfling oh. culture is a little different to human culture can I give him advantage by trying to help aid yeah sure there it is okay oof he says, he's very skeptical, but he looks at you and goes, I see. Well, I will query the king and see if he has time to meet with you today. We don't need he's much of his time. very skeptical. How long are you looking for to gain an audience for? I look at Gilbert. Five minutes should do. Five, minutes. five 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 minutes i believe 10 minutes to be thorough i see well i'll see what i can do about five and he walks over to like he he walks over to the porticullis um which when he when he came back with them like he opened the porticullis they did not dip through it um and so now he walks through uh he like reopens the door which he locked behind him when he came out and then he 
like locks it again once you're the three of you are inside. He like beckons you to come inside with him. Mm-hmm. And so okay. he gets you once you're inside. He locks the door again, puts is, the key deep is, in his his robe. Oh, deep in his robe. Okay, deep in his robe. Like like he reaches like under his armpit area. Oh, wow. Like like there might be some sort of bag there, hmm. uh, like pocket inner pocket. Like you know how like when you have a suit, you have a pocket inside the jacket. It's like that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys haven't worn a suit before. I certainly don't wear them all the time. I just happen mm-hmm. to have a really nice jacket that has a pocket there. Yeah, Anyways. It's pretty common. Um, yeah. So the you get inside, and you notice a couple of things. First of all, this building is fucking huge, and you haven't seen a building this big since you left wherever you came from because, actually, uh, Gilbert may never have seen a building this big. Um, yeah, Thrust, I, you probably would have, and then the others, I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I stare at it. You know, I don't like. I don't have a have like a look of like, wow. But I, but I just like kind of stare with my eyes kind of big. You know, just looking around, trying to look nonchalant. Um. So you, you see a couple things. This building a, appears to be some sort of like barrack. Um. It is definitely like the inner sanctum, uh, and it seems to be the barracks. You also see that once you're inside here, this appears to be some sort of like big residence. Um, and then over here appears to be some sort of like attached residence where maybe there's servants, kitchens, etc., that live or operate in here. Uh, this is like clearly not as nice and it's tucked in the back, but this is really nice. And it's like on the top, there's a wall and in the, in on like, that's like four stories. So the it's like three stories of residence. And then on the top, there's a wall as well. Um, and like, there's like, um, it's really big for, for something uh, of this time and place. Uh, so you go in here and there's guards all atop here and you can see like a couple of posts uh, up there and you can also see servants buzzing about here and it's brick uh, stone specifically not red but uh, gray stone uh, there's like landscaping in here this is all nice and everything there's flowers and so the the guy walks and he walks into this area of the building not quite the servants but also you know it's on the nicer side but it's it's over here and he walks into a door and and turns around as just as he enters the doorway and, and says uh you may wait here in the garden and uh i will be back shortly uh and there's like benches to to wait like this is a very nice area and it's pretty okay. nice out today, so he's he's leaving you out here. I go to Gilbert. Uh, Shoo sure, Gilbert. I you, you're gonna have to do the talking in here. And what we want is okay. we want to help with the pirates. That's what we we if we can get a contract from him and make ourselves valuable to him with the pirates. Then we should be safe from Aldo. That's that's what we're here for. I'm not sure if I made that clear before we came in. Okay, so get get a contract to kill pirates, and then we'll be safe for safe from Aldo. Yes, if you can not mention Aldo, that would probably be better for us. Gotcha. No worries. You know I do this all the time. You nailed it with that fighter ball as well. It freaked them out. It was awesome. <laughs> and while we're out there, you know, because honestly, um, James, you didn't say say anything about it, but I was when I was writing um, uh, Gucci the entire time. If if he's still with me in the garden, I'll probably get off him then, so he can you know get some rest. Oh, you're ri- you you're know. riding Gucci right now. Yeah, I always unless you tell me, I always ride Gucci. <laughs> yeah. Unless you mention something, I will ride him into ends. Supermarkets, castles. Okay, well, he everywhere. definitely gave you a fucking weird look. And I think you're really, really weird. And so he comes back out. 
and he's got like um some other stuffy looking guy in a green robe and he says uh these are the people who are uh from hub hole and he looks and he says yeah hub hole like he's pretending he knows what that is but he's never actually heard of it he says this is our minister of um, public affairs. You can speak with him, how, whatever you need. But the king is not available today. Okay, have I ever seen this person before? And in, in, in my life, because Hubhole is a halfling city. If he's not a halfling, I'm not gonna. Believe. No, no, he's not. Like you, he's a human. He's another human. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you've never, you've never met either of them. I so you know I walk up to the both and I'm like, um, so you're from Hub Hole? And I no, kind of no, have no. like, a, huh? Uh, did what I did imply he, that? I kind of got the impression that that you said he said he was a representative of Hub Hole, so I assume no. that's from there. No, no, no. He's uh, the Minister of Public Affairs. Oh, Minister of Public Affairs. Okay. I was like, okay. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, so I. <laughs> Walk up to them, you know. I, you know, I give PG pat on 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 the, the neck, you know. I walk over to him, you know, in my armor, my sword to my side, um, and I just say, "Oh, all right then." Um, well, I have come because I've been kind of worried with with my travels. Um, uh, on the way here, my ship was attacked by pir- by elven pirates, um, and when I took took a romp in the country with, with my servants, we were attacked again by elven bandits. Not to mention now I hear even more. You guys are having trouble with more pirates in, uh, on the land and on the sea. I've come here to offer the services of myself and my servants to rid you of the, of this dreaded pirate menace. And and at that last part, I'm completely serious. I give my my rarely used serious look. And I bow. Nice. I'm so the, what you said that is technically not a lie, but I'm still gonna ask you to roll deception because it's and, very deceptive how you're saying it. Okay. Any um, way to get a bonus to that from being? You so have cool. advantage because it was a very good. Okay. Cool. All right. Here we go. Come on, dice gods. Thirteen. Okay. Thirteen. So they they definitely seem to bite a little bit. And the minister says, uh, we definitely do know of those issues, um, and we are actively working on it. We are currently making changes to political structure to allow us to exercise resources to relieve those areas uh, of the elven, um, he looks for the right word, uh, bandits, as you said, and pirates, uh, which have been recently uh, a nuisance. However, uh, we may be able to use some help. Uh, we have heard rumors of additional uh, elven settlements popping up in the countryside. Um, but you mentioned that you have a fleet of ships. No, I took I I took I took a ship over here that was given given that was given to us to 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 use to bring here, and then the captain um, I gave him permission to find a contract so he can make some money while he was here. The ship will still be docked for a few days, but after that, I I will have to leave. I so I'm trying to offer my services here while 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 I can to garner, oh, sorry, um, good relations between Hubhole and and and, and this fair city. Uh, he looks at the secretary and then looks back at you and says, "I see. And how many men do you have at your service?" Right now, I came with a small group of myself and um, there's. Five of, of of me and and four very a uh, very fight can't talk today guys I'm sorry it's okay. one of these days okay um it, it is just my it is just my 
myself and four of my bravest and brightest servants who are very ta talented and I did not know the situation and I did not seem, want to seem too aggressive by bringing too many men at once. And with that, I, I do like a flourish with, like, I don't draw my sword, but I like push my coat aside, showing my sword and like pointing at it, I suppose, in a performative Gesturing way. Gesturing almost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then try to look menacing at the same time. Okay. <laughs> Give me an intimidation then. Oh, I can do that. That's that's my bread and butter. The lowest I can roll is a knight, so. Rowie, intimidation. 18. Yeah, there we go. Okay, you look pretty menacing. And uh, they say, as, uh, as they're looking for a word, they like, this is actually happening. It's not just me. They go, as, um, Now I'm looking for the word. Uh, <laughs> not aggressive, not uh, capable, as capable as uh, your servant looks. I'm not sure that four uh, of him is going to be very much use to us. Um, I very much thank you for your uh, gesture, but I think we'll be okay on our own. We've got many men that we have at our disposal who we are uh, dispatching to the area. Affected areas. <coughs> Sorry. Well, uh, well, Gilbert obviously looks, you know, a little bit disappointed. Um, so, oh, okay. I mean, um, just I just came here because I heard you guys um, were have 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 having a hard time. And I wanted to get, you know, good relations with people. But, I mean, I'm not going to press the uh, subject if you're really not interested in the help of, uh, of people who want, want to be want to be your friends. And with that, I will turn around and get, get on back on Poochie. And um, I'm like, come on, Thrust. Our help, for some reason, is not need needed here at this time. I'd and I just turn Poochie around and start to go out the way the way way we came in, unless they stop me. I nope. I bow deeply, and I uh, before I leave, I I say to Severance and the minister, we will be staying at the Golden Stow. Uh, my master and the other servants, we are very skilled in many ways. If you do require our assistance while we're in the city. Please do not hesitate to ask. We would very much like to have a good relation with this shitty and with a carvel. And then I bow as like, low as I can and walk out. Okay. Roll me perception. Oh man. Both, both of us or just... Yes. Both do you of see you. the crossbows pointing at you? Perception. Doink. Man, I've been rolling pretty good tonight. Oh, nice. Perception. Good. Okay. Okay. So you guys are walking out, and as you walk out, you notice from one of the higher... So on the inside uh, of the the palace... I wish it was palace. It's like, uh, we'll call it palace. It's pretty grand, so we'll call it a palace. On the inside of the residence, palace, whatever it is, there's many more windows. The first and second floors have windows, but on the outside they don't because like, it's like this thing of like not wanting to see mm -hmm. outside of it, right? Uh, they only want to see nice things. And so from the second story window that is just like here, like where the tip of this is, um, as you round this corner, you catch out of the corner of your eye Lord Aldo Forrester looking down from the window at you. And as you walk out, the portacullis opens and you're shown out. Uh, Gilbert notices this. Uh, Thrust does not. Well, that went well. Yeah. Um, kind of. Um don't think they're gonna buy it any like i'm saying this like you know once we're 
further further down from their guards. Not like right outside the door, but I'm like, mm-hmm. um, I kind of saw out out Aldo in the window as well. You when you get uh, outside the porticos, there's a servant scrubbing the thing that you've put on the outside of the. <laughs> <laughs> scrubbing it very vigorously. So you you show Aldo inside the the building. Yes, yes, in the second or third story window. I I can't can't. I, you know me. I I don't do tall buildings. They just they all look the same to me. He was in like the second or the third floor. Yeah, whichever but, one is the highest. Doesn't matter where he was. It matters that he was there. Uh, okay, I think maybe. We might not be able to build a relationship with this guy if Aldo's already got his fingers in the pie. Well, the good. Well, the thing is, even though we helped Aldo out, he, uh, we never told. We never really told him I wasn't a. Yeah, he doesn't like us. But that's fine. Um, I mean, at least we got to talk to some people. We learned, like, what the fuck is this deal with him being king? He was lord this morning. Uh. Yeah, I I don't I don't get me okay, Thrust. You know me. I don't get politics. I just know that you know people think they're better than others just because they were um, popped out in certain houses. Yeah, I I don't get it myself. I when I grew up living on the tribe, you would have a group of elders who told everyone what you do, but there was no single person in charge, and it didn't matter who gave birth to you. It was all about your age and your wisdom and all that junk. But Hubhole had that too until the dwarf and dwarves came and messed that, that all up. Hmm. Well, maybe we should go back to the inn, wait for our friends, see how they dealt with their their things. Yes, but I think this time I will leave leave Peachy armored up just in case. Yes. I mean, Aldo doesn't have any reason to want to fight us or attack us because we haven't said anything about the elves. So we should be okay. No, 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 we haven't. I just mentioned the Elven Bandits because, you know, everybody knows about them. Well, even the fact that we're talking about them in a negative way could probably work favors in making Aldo like us again. So let's... That is true. It wasn't... in Yeah, it, it, it was okay. It was okay. It could have gone better, but I think we both, especially you, performed excellently. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and then uh, I love the flourish you 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 did back there. That was awesome. Well, thank you. I am a performer after all. Uh, and yeah, we go back to the inn and wait for our friends. Mm-hmm. Well, while I'm there, I'm, um, I'm like, I wonder if they have any um, rabbit stew mixed in oatmeal. That's nasty. <laughs> Um, so you go and you get some food and do some stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and and on the way, I pose the, the question to the thrust. Do you think they still have the boxing ring area? Well, they that might. might. be fun to go to before we leave. That's definitely something we could look into tonight, uh, maybe. I, I don't think it'd be open this early in the day. Um, yeah. Uh, would this be a good place to have a quick couple of minute break yes that's what i was thinking perfect mm-hmm. excellent awesome. 